The internationally recognized limit for how long a human embryo can be grown in a lab is 14 days. But in light of advancements that may now make it possible to culture embryos beyond those 14 days, scientists and ethicists are discussing, should growing human embryos in a lab beyond this point be allowed? Okay, hold up. What do we mean when we talk about lab-grown embryos? Typically, these are fertilized embryos that have been donated to scientific research by in vitro fertilization clinics because the embryo is no longer viable for an IVF treatment. And these embryos are different from embryoids. Embryoids are structures that resemble an early human embryo, but they lack some of the cell types and the structure to develop into something fully viable. These are often created in a lab from embryonic stem cells, and they can be a useful tool for studying lots of aspects of human development. One recent groundbreaking method uses another kind of stem cell. Scientists take skin cells and hit rewind. They reverse them into pluripotent stem cells, or cells that can essentially develop into any tissue type. By exposing them to the right environment, those cells can be coaxed into forming a structure that's really similar to the earliest stage of a human embryo, called a blastocyst. But because these didn't develop from an actual embryo, they're not quite the same as a real blastocyst, so they're called blastoids instead. And the existing 14-day limit on lab-mediated human embryo or embryoid development was suggested after the first IVF babies were born in the 1970s. The media started to refer to these individuals as test tube babies, and the scientific community wanted to make it very clear that embryos were not being developed into fully viable fetuses in a test tube. Instead, IVF is when an egg is fertilized with sperm in a petri dish, and those fertilized eggs usually grow for two to five days in a lab before being transferred to the patient's uterus. And that's technically a lab-grown embryo. Now, growing an embryo into a fully-fledged baby in a lab, a process called ectogenesis, is still totally in the realm of science fiction. But after the development of IVF, there was growing concern that maybe developing embryos were being experimented on or thrown away past certain points in development. And as the debate rages worldwide about when life actually begins, this is and was understandably a very thorny issue. So a U.S. regulating body proposed the 14-day rule just as a guideline, and that limit actually became a law in at least a dozen countries. Why 14 days in particular? That's the point at which an embryo develops something called the primitive streak, which is the beginning of the body differentiating into its separate building blocks. It's also the point at which becoming a twin is no longer possible, so that's where individuality is assigned. And until recently, we didn't even know how to keep human embryos or something similar alive in the lab longer than nine days. So this wasn't really that pressing of a question, but 2016 was the year that a couple of research teams got all the way to 13 days. And ever since, the scientific community has been grappling with how to deal with these advances in the face of the limit, or if the limit should be changed altogether. Because of the advancements in our ability to grow these structures in the lab for longer, and the exciting developments in blastoid and embryoid research, there's now the possibility of investigating parts of human development we've never had access to before. This could help us understand why some miscarriages happen, or how some birth defects develop. We'd be able to see the effects of all kinds of chemicals and medications on embryonic development and maybe make IVF safer and more effective. But would a new time limit only mean good things? What about the possibility of genetically modifying human embryos in new ways? Like, we're gonna need to think about that one real hard. And at what point can scientists ethically say that a blastocyst is no longer a clump of cells and is instead a fetus? And what would we do with a lab-grown embryo at that point? We're gonna need plans in place for all of this. And ever since the 14-day rule was first proposed in the 1970s, experts in this field from scientists to philosophers 
have known that we would one day have to revisit this because of scientific advancements. And that day has arrived. The International Society for Stem Cell Research, or the ISSCR, released its updated guidelines for culturing human embryos and embryoids. They're calling for a public conversation with ethicists, scientists, and regulators about the social and ethical issues associated with going past 14 days. How this may all translate into legal changes in some countries still remains to be seen, and lots of those questions we talked about before still remain unanswered. What do you think about extending the 14-day rule? If you're interested in these public conversations, make sure you check out the link in our description for more details. Make sure you subscribe to Seeker for all of your boundary-pushing biomedical news, and if you have another stem cell development you want us to cover on the channel, let us know. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.